It's a truth universally acknowledged that a married woman in possession of an okay fortune must be in want of a bonnet and a lot of Jane Austen books and some jewellery in a mug. <laughs> Welcome to this video. <laughs> Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Today I have a huge Jane Austen haul to share with you. Recently I went to Jane Austen's house in Chawton and Chawton House where her brother lived and no exaggeration when I say it was one of the best days of my life. I have never been so excited to go somewhere. For me this was like my, one of my kind of top things on my bucket list and it did not disappoint. I actually think one of the most interesting things about Jane Austen is how many different places she lived. But Chawton was really kind of her last main home and it was where her main six novels were kind of birthed. So you have the revisions of kind of some of her best loved works like Sense and Sensibility and Pride and Prejudice and then being published as well as writing novels such as Emma, Mansell Park and Persuasion. So this is really where Jane Austen spent a lot of her time writing and publishing and so it was so moving to walk around this really beautiful house and I may have spent a lot of money in all of the gift shops I went to so this is what this video is. There was just so much attention to detail and I've got a full video of my trip to Chawton on my channel so please go and check it out because I think you can just tell that I had the very best day. One thing I loved when I was walking around the house is actually how they've used so many of Jane Austen's letters. Um, so when you're walking around there are kind of little um, cards with um, a quote from Jane you know in a letter to her sister Cassandra as an example that really brings the room to life and there are some really lovely moments where for example there was and I have this in my video there are a pair of gloves on a pianoforte and the letter is um, you know Jane asking someone like we have some a pair of white gloves on the pianoforte like are these yours and just so many lovely moments where you can see Jane Austen as a person and I think in a way Jane Austen is one of those writers that is still relatively elusive to us. The whole place has really brought her alive and I really don't think I've talked about Jane Austen or my love of Jane Austen enough on this channel. She is one of those writers um, a bit like Virginia Woolf that is so integral to my being and um, I obviously have studied her as well and every time I reread one of her novels which actually I've been doing this year and last year, this year I've read, um, reread most of Jane Austen's works and and I just forget how brilliant she is and how clever she is, um, which might sound a bit patronising, but I just think that, um, I think it was Virginia Woolf who said about Jane Austen that um, kind of, she's so elusive in her cleverness in a way, in her brilliance, um, that you it's so good you almost miss it and then when you see it you go, you have to kind of take a step back. And that is how I feel about kind of revisiting Jane Austen's novels because I recently reread Pride and Prejudice which has always been one of my favourite Jane Austen novels and I hadn't actually read it since I was a teenager because there, it was one that I hadn't studied so I hadn't kind of revisited a lot. And oh my god, it is brilliant. So if you haven't read Pride and Prejudice, I cannot I don't even want you to be watching this video because this would be time in which you could spend reading Pride and Prejudice. It is such a treat and I now kind of came away being like, okay, so I need every reference, I need every copy of Pride and Prejudice, I need everything related to that novel. And indeed, as you'll see from my haul, I kind of did go away and buy a million copies of Pride and Prejudice. I'd also love if you go back and watch my video on Jane Austen's house in Chawton. But now, if you like pretty books, you're going to be in for a treat. When I say I got carried away, I'm really not joking because I had to buy a bag to fit everything in. But I did save up for this. I have actually, I should point that out. I have been saving up for this trip for a long time. So this was kind of intended, but I wasn't quite expecting to need a bag. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I've been wanting to start collecting the Penguin Cloth Band classics of my favourite novels. And this is an edition of Emma that I bought at my book kind of book shopping hen party afternoon tea day and this edition was used obviously at my wedding because we had the final kind of paragraph of Emma read at our wedding by um, my maid of honour Ariel. This edition has become very special to me because it's where I keep a little letter that Ariel wrote for me on the day of my wedding or the day after my wedding and also on the day she must have decided to pick up some blossom from our tree in York that so we call our tree um, and I didn't realise until ages later that she'd actually picked some of this blossom up. 
I'm trying to be really delicate and she put a leaf of the blossom tree from the day of my wedding into the book. So ever since then I've been wanting to collect all of Jane Austen's novels in the Craftband Classics edition. And what better place to buy them than Jane Austen's house? I thought I would show you them in the order of like the ones I love the most and the ones I like the least but then I realised actually it's going to have to be like can't live without and love because actually even the novel at the bottom of this list is actually still one of my favourite novels so let's just do can't live without and love. So the first one has to be Pride and Prejudice and look at that. Next I have a book that obviously already mentioned but it is Emma and I just love these chairs. This one's actually gonna be really tricky because I never used to like Sense and Sensibility. I used to genuinely just not not enjoy it but I've recently reread it and I love it but because I guess I've had to reread it to determine whether I like it or not the next one has to be Persuasion and yet again another beautiful cover. The, a beautiful cover is obviously just the theme of this whole video and Sense and Sensibility. This edition actor I haven't seen that often with these kind of creamy flowers because the other ones I've seen have had really like striking pink flowers and I actually really like this kind of subtle um, cream. It's actually kind of one of my favourite colour schemes. Now we have Northanger Abbey which is actually the first Jane Austen novel I've ever read and it's also the one that I read most recently. Then we have Mansfield Park and I always feel sorry for Mansfield Park because actually I think it's one of Jane Austen's most interesting novels and I really love it and it's one I've studied twice weirdly um, and so there's so much to kind of uncover and just it's such a good book but I always feel like it's at the bottom of everybody's Jane Austen list and so I kind of want to just reclaim Mansfield Park which is difficult because I put it at the end of the list but it's still the end of an exceptionally good list so if you've been kind of haven't read Mansfield Park yet you've been putting it off because it's not often people's favourite Jane Austen novel and evidently it's not my favourite Jane Austen novel but if you haven't read it I would definitely recommend it um, but yes, these are the books that I've read. And then I picked up Sanditon, which is actually a Jane Austen novel that I haven't read yet. Um, I think because it remains unfinished, that's why I haven't ever read it. And I'm a bit of a completist, so it kind of upsets me the novel itself isn't complete. But when I was at the museum, especially, and was so much about Cassandra and Sanditon, I now have to read it. But this book also contains Lady Susan, which I really enjoyed, and also the Watsons that I uh, haven't read either. When I was at Chorto, I also picked up this really cute postcard of Mr. Darcy's thoughts, and I'll leave Leave the link to the illustrator in the description of this video but I bought this because Ben and I always kind of joke that Ben is Mr Darcy in his kind of <laughs> styles of communication and just a lot of personality there's a lot of reading of um I know you shouldn't analyse but there's a lot of readings of Mr Darcy being autistic and when Ben and I have discussed that together and obviously Ben um Pride and Pudge is actually kind of a novel that we've read a lot together and have a lot of have had a lot of nods to it for our relationship and I'll share a few things um, later on but um, we've always talked about Mr Darcy and Ben being quite quite aligned so um, I had to buy this because I thought that all of them they could just be replaced with Ben and I and would completely stand um, but yeah I really love that. Now I didn't buy these three editions of Jane Austen's novels at Chawton but they are linked to Chawton and I've been so excited to receive them that I can't wait to show you them. These beautiful editions of Jane Austen's works are published by the Macmillan a Collectors and Libraries published by Pam Macmillan in association with Chawton House and if you'll see um, from watching my video, one thing I loved was the, the restoration they've done of the uh, wallpaper at Jane Austen's house. And these editions really beautifully have all that kind of restored wallpaper on them. And when I say when I was walking around this house, I think the wallpaper was actually what made me fell in love with Chawton. And I kind of was walking around being like, I need something with the wallpaper on and like I wanted to take the wallpaper home, I researched something and actually get it for myself because I really love this kind of yellow one. So when I saw after my visit to Chawton that they were bringing out this beautiful collection with um, Pam McMillan, I knew I had to buy them. And at the back of these editions as well, there is a Q&A um, a section with the curator um, at Chawton House um, and it just felt really special and I just think that because they're small as well, they're just really beautiful like you know when you see a book and you're like damn that's a really beautiful book and they're like the type is like I don't know what the actual official publishing word is called but the text is like indented and it's got like the little flaps just everything about it just really this just really does it for me so I think these might be my favorite 
editions of her work. So I didn't say which novels they were. I mean, I know you can read them, but there is Sense and Sensibility. And then we have Emma and Pride and Prejudice. So actually, probably kind of three of my favourite novels. The only thing I'm disappointed about is obviously there is only three wallpapers, therefore they've only released three novels. But So I'm sad that we won't get the full collection. But I am hoping, if these are really beautiful, they might think of doing something in the future. Because I'm a little bit in love. <laughs> now going back to my trip to Chawton, I also went to Chawton House, which is where Jane Austen's brother lived and was uh, obviously adopted into a wealthier family. And so the house is known as kind of the big house. Um, and I brought even more things. The first two things I want to talk about are these really beautiful necklaces um, designed uh, in connection or in collaboration, in partnership with Chawton House and Tatty Divine. And I've been wanting a Tatty Divine necklace actually for a really long time. Um, so when I saw these, I knew I had to get them and then I couldn't decide which Jane Austen uh, necklace to get so I bought both of them. Then I picked up two more books. The first one is Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley and Lucy Worsley, a bit like Jane Austen, is one of the, the great loves of my life. But this is a biography that I've been wanting to read for a long time, especially because it focuses so much on, as I said at the beginning, all the places that Jane Austen has lived, which is kind of a part of like social kind of cultural history that I've find fascinating anyway, kind of houses and, and location and movement and things. So I'm really looking forward to this. And then I saw another Penguin Cloth Band classic, and this is one, um, again, that I've been wanting for a long time in a really beautiful edition. Mary Walton Cross, Vindication of the Rights of Women. And I bought this because actually this book for me is so connected with Jane Austen because I studied it a lot during my MA and I did um, a really big kind of essay I remember so fondly because I had a great time on uh, a Vindication of the Rights of Women and also Mansfield Park together and referenced Wollstonecraft a lot in my studies of Jane Austen. The only edition of this book I had was a library edition and so when I saw this I thought I, I need to buy it. I was in a spendy mood, that's all I'm going to say, but um, I've just recently actually reread this and um, was just reminded of the genius of Mary Wollstonecraft. Um, and if you haven't read it again, I would recommend it. Like every single book in this video, I would recommend. Now, the last thing I bought at Chawton is undoubtedly the best thing I bought at Chawton. But it's also probably one of the best things I've ever bought in my entire life. But actually, I didn't buy this. I wanted this, but I decided not to buy it in the end. But Ben then secretly went to go and buy me it because he knew that if I didn't buy this, all he would hear is me talking about how much I should have bought it. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a bonnet. <laughs> yes, I bought myself a bonnet. Why? We don't need a reason. We don't need a reason to buy a bonnet. My smile is enough of the reason as for me to need a bonnet. Now, when I say that when I bought this, I didn't take it off for days, um, I'm not lying. Now, I have never felt more beautiful and I think I should wear a bonnet at, at I really should have tied my hair up. I think I should wear a bonnet every day. Um, I am planning to take it on a few trips and outings um, and my mum who makes the majority of my clothes, I think I mentioned that quite a few times, she makes all my dresses and things, I have requested, I have requested an empire line dress but kind of with a modern twist so I can wear it. So I've given her a challenge and I'm hoping Elaine pulls through with a dress that I can wear with a bonnet. Um, I had the best day of my life and I need to go again. Remarkably, I still have a few more things to show you. So the first one I brought in Oxford. So Ben and I recently went to Oxford and we went to the Bodleian Library, we went to the Bodleian Library shop and I saw this in their sale. This is Jane Austen, Writer in the World, edited by Catherine Sutherland, who's obviously a professor at the University of Oxford, who I've read quite a lot of essays on, I think maybe more academic essays. Um, but I, when I saw this was five pounds, I couldn't resist it because obviously I love kind of the Regency era history and also Jane Austen obviously as a writer literally was just wearing a bonnet um but I haven't read this yet but I'm really looking forward to it and it's also like it's just so well done and like so many beautiful illustrations and letters and kind of context to her work and this is just my dream so when I saw this for 
yeah five quid what a steal um and i actually really recommend the bodleian library shop and this is obviously published by the bodleian library and so many of their books are not only kind of beautifully made but they're just really good so if you uh, are interested i'm guessing this is probably still on sale um but yes a little thing from oxford now for the anniversary segment of this video which you probably didn't think was coming but it but it is um so the first thing to show you is a book i bought in york so ben and i went to york to celebrate our first anniversary our first wedding anniversary i should say and i saw this edition this movie 1995 tie-in edition of pride and prejudice with Colin Firth and Jennifer Ely. Now this is my, this is my Pride and Prejudice. This is my favourite adaptation. It's a hill I'll die on. I love it. I also have very strong feelings towards both Jennifer Ely and Colin Firth in this adaptation. I feel like there was multiple questions going on at this point for me and to this day, um, it's, it's so good, it's so accurate. I recently, as I said, reread the book and I reread the book and then rewatched the adaptation and it's spot on and it's perfect. And this for me is just such a special find. This is older than me or maybe, I, I was born in 1995, so it's like, I think, I can't remember the, I think the adaptation came out maybe in September. So this book is the same age as me. And what a joy, what a joy it has brought to me <laughs> in my 27th year, but just, I'm obsessed. For Ben and I's first wedding anniversary, as expected, we really lent into the fact that it's a paper anniversary and we wanted to get a few special things to kind of keep us mementos of our first year of happy marriage. And the first one is, in fact, they're all linked to Pride and Prejudice. So Pride and Prejudice is a novel that we, actually, we both actually really love and um, it's kind of popped up in lots of ways in our kind of relationship and also in our marriage. So on our wedding day, for instance, we had um, a Jane Austen book as one of our wedding favours and the bag that I had on my wedding day was Pride and Prejudice. So when we think of Pride and Prejudice, it really feels now connected to our wedding. Um, and as I've said before, Ben is is kind of Mr Darcy. The first thing we bought was a nod to my wedding bouquet which was origami flowers and we got a single rose origami flower with made out of Pride and Prejudice um, pages and this is by the same really lovely um, creator origami boutique who made my bouquet and Ben and I have an idea of collecting, well not yeah, of buying a rose um, paper flower for every wedding anniversary until we have a really beautiful bouquet and it just feels so special and so we picked Pride and Prejudice for these flowers. The next thing we bought was this really beautiful framed quote from Pride and Prejudice and it's on a piece of paper from Pride and Prejudice and it's the first line of the novel and um, which obviously is very apt for a wedding and this is actually um, designed by Bookishly who did all of our wedding favours and so but all of these things kind of just linked into our wedding so we've had a very Jane Austen year so far I especially have and a very Jane Austen first anniversary and wedding I guess. We've now arrived at the final item of this haul and it couldn't be more iconic than a Purr and Prejudice mug. A cat dressed as Mr Darcy, listen, two of my favourite things in one, also my favourite things, I love a mug, come on, you can't, no one can say I'm not making good life choices. Look at that! <laughs> I just want everyone to see this in its full glory. So cheers to that and thank you so much for joining me for this very beloved Jane Austen haul with a variety of things and if you haven't already please go and check out my video I did of Chawton House and Jane Austen's house in Chawton because I actually just really loved the video and I feel like it got a little bit lost and I one of the reasons I film videos like that is because I know that I'm incredibly lucky to be able to go and visit all these places and I know not everyone is and so I like to take as much much footage that I can, take in as much of the kind of ambiance of the place and then film. So I hope you enjoy that if you haven't already watched it and thank you for staying with me until the end of this video. If you're here with me now please leave your favourite Jane Austen novel in the comments because I would love to see which ones people love the most and uh, I think we have to do a pen emoji for Queen Jane but yes thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon in another video which may or may not be about Jane Austen. Thank you.